Hi there. Now this is a good example on motion in a vertical circle where we've got a particle P of mass M. It's attached to the end of a light inextensible string of length A. And the other end of the string is fixed at this point O here. And the particle is initially held with OP horizontal and the string taut. It's then projected vertically upwards with a speed of U where U squared is 5ag. And when OP has turned through an angle of theta, the speed of P is V. And the tension in the string is T. And what we've got to do in the first part is to find in terms of AG and theta an expression for V squared. And then we'll tackle the other problems as we go through the video. Now the first thing I'd want to do is just add to this diagram and I'll start off by putting that initial speed u that we're given up here when the string is horizontal. And for this first question it doesn't involve the tension t so there's a good chance that to do this we have to do it by energy considerations. So what I'm going to do is look at the energy at this level here when the string is horizontal. I'll call that A, that position there. And then when it's up here, I'll call this position B. Now at A, I'm going to say that the energy here, that's the gravitational potential energy, is zero. It's a good idea in most problems to take that gravitational potential energy as being zero at the lowest level. So that's going to be set when the particle starts here. So if that's the case then for part A, what we've got is the energy at A must equal the energy at B. And the type of energy we've got today is just purely kinetic energy. There's no gravitational potential energy because we've set that level to be zero. Now when it gets to B, then the type of energy it's got here is kinetic energy because it's moving. So we've got Ke at B and it's also gained some gravitational potential energy because it's risen a height. So that's going to be gravitational potential energy at B. You might set this equation out slightly differently to what I've done here. You might subtract the Ke at B from this equation and so therefore you've got the Ke at A minus the Ke at B equals the gravitational potential energy at B. In other words the loss in kinetic energy from A to B is equal to the gain in gravitational potential energy. But either way it's basically going to reduce down to the same equation. So let's just start to fill this in. The kinetic energy at A is going to be a half m u squared. And that's going to be equal to the kinetic energy at B. It's moving with a speed v here, so it's going to be a half m v squared. And then for the gravitational potential energy, that's going to be plus mgh, where h is this distance that it's risen up here. Okay, so we just mark that in. That is h. Now I notice that each term contains an m, so I can cancel that out. And I can also multiply through by 2, get rid of those halves. So we'll end up with u squared equals v squared plus 2gh. Now, what is h? Well, by trigonometry from this right angle triangle here, we know that this length O to P is the radius of the circle, so it's A. And so, therefore, H will be A sine theta. Now, we know that U squared is 5AG, so if we substitute that in, 5AG there, equals V squared plus 2g times h, and h we said was 
a sine theta. So we've got a sine theta there. And rearrange this now for v squared. We've got to have an expression for v squared. Then v squared will equal 5ag minus 2ag sine theta. OK, so you'll generally find that quite a lot of these questions where you've got motion in a vertical circle involve energy considerations. Now, for the next part, part B, find in terms of m, g and theta an expression for t. Well, that's going to mean resolving towards the centre of the circle. So we need to add some more forces to this diagram. We've got the tension T here, which I'll just overwrite in red there. OK, so we've got the tension T. We've also got the weight of the particle, mg. So we've got mg newtons there, and we've got a tension T newtons there. They're the only two forces acting on the particle. And there will be an acceleration. And the acceleration, remember, for circular motion is always directed towards the centre of the circle. And because we've got a speed v here, then that acceleration is equal to v squared divided by the radius. And the radius for this problem is a. So we've got the acceleration is v squared over a. I'll just get rid of that a there because it's a bit misleading. OK, so there's our acceleration. We also need to think about putting an angle theta on this particle here. And what we have is that if we consider a tangent to the circle through there, OK, then the angle theta will show up as this angle in here. OK, a bit small, but I hope you can see that. So what we're going to do next is resolve then in the direction of P to O. And if we do that, what we've got is all of T acts towards the center. And then we've got the component of the weight acting towards the center. That's going to be mg sine theta. So you've got plus mg sine theta. And that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. Mass is m. The acceleration then is v squared over a. Okay, So we've got that, v squared over a. Now if I rearrange this equation, make t the subject, we're therefore going to have t equals m over a there multiplied by v squared. But we've just seen that v squared is this result here. So that is 5ag minus 2ag sine theta. And then we've got this term here, which we subtract, minus mg sine theta. Now, I can see that the a's cancel out here. And if you simplify this further, you'll find that t equals 5mg minus 3mg sine theta. All right. Now, for the next part, part c, we've got to prove that p moves in a complete circle. And for P to move in a complete circle, the string must always stay taut. And the place where it's likely to go slack is at the top here. And that's when theta equals 90 degrees. And when theta equals 90 degrees, let's just put it in here, when theta equals 90 degrees, if we look at the tension here, you can see that T would equal 5mg minus 3mg sine 90. Sine of 90 is 1, so you're just going to get a total of 2mg here. So we therefore have T equals 2mg. And if that's the case, it's greater than 0. So therefore, P completes a circle. OK? Just puts, completes a circle. 
because we have tension. Now in part D we're asked to find the maximum speed of the particle P and for this the maximum speed is going to occur when P reaches the bottom here. You project it up from here, it slows down, it does make complete circles but now it's going to start to speed up and its maximum speed will be here at the bottom. And so that's going to be when theta is 270 degrees. So let's just put here max speed. It's going to occur at the bottom, that is when theta equals 270 degrees. So all we need to do is substitute this into our equation here in A. So that means that therefore V squared is going to be equal to 5AG minus 2AG sine 270 degrees. Well sine of 270 is minus 1. So you're going to end up with 5AG plus 2AG which is going to be 7AG. So therefore that maximum speed V is going to be the square root then of 7ag. So I hope that's given you some idea anyway about how you go about uh, tackling these problems then when you've got a particle on a light inextensible string moving around in a vertical circle. Okay.